pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Welcome, everybody. What do we got going on tonight, Ben? Uh, we shall start with department head updates. We'll start with Chief Flynn. Um, I, last uh, last month, I'm sorry, I don't have the final figures for the year, but I will for the next two. Um, we did 160 uh, service calls. Uh, 55 with 911 nine calls and 105 transfers. Last month, we also started our um, home visits with our paramedic, um, and we did 40 of those last month. And I, I believe Ben and I have heard nothing but compliments on on that service. So, okay, so far, so good. Yeah, I, I had somebody call me yes, uh, not yesterday, last week, um, just saying what a. What a great program it is, and um, the individual, Ted Joubert, is the, the one doing the, the home visits, and um, how good he, he is and with everything. Um, nice. So it seems to be being received very, very well, and there's a meeting in a couple of weeks with the hospital and then an individual from the state to talk about the program and, and other opportunities. That, that's going, and I'll be giving you that figure every month as well. Okay. That's going very well. Better than I, we all thought it would. Um, this past month, we're doing, uh, well, this month that we're on, we're doing fire truck pump maintenance. That seems to be going well, no huge surprises. Um, and ambulance is running okay. <laughs> Good. Things are going well there, so that's about all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Uh, Chief Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> David Walker, which was our last hire, uh, entered the academy last week. His first week went very well. Um, I just spoke to him as I walked in here. Um, this week is starting out the right direction for him. So he's, he's, uh, it's never a good time for anybody, but he's, he's adapted to it very well. Um, we had some potential um, Cruiser maintenance oh, items uh, on the corner 17 cruiser that we're looking to, to get rid of if, if we get a new cruiser. Uh, but our newest town mechanic was able to fix that uh, for really almost zero cost. So he's working out very well. Uh, save, save the, uh, our cruiser maintenance line several hundred dollars. Uh, business is Google. We don't seem to have a lot of business to do. So that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Eli isn't here uh, for Colonel Town for the Rec Department. Um, he's got basketball tonight, but he wanted me to report that um, State Haven um, senior um, exercise class is going very well. There's two tournaments coming up next month. Um, the third and fourth grade basketball tournament is going to be February 3rd through the 5th. And then there's a fifth and sixth grade tournament that's going to be February 17th through the 19th. And we have um, towns as far as Laconia coming up for that. So, um, I mean, there's always, usually in the summertime, there's a lot of tournaments with baseball, softball to bring a lot of people in town, and uh, basketball is, is no exception, so there'll be a lot of people in town with anything. Um, so that's a good thing. And also, Barbara has a, had a conflict tonight with another appointment, but she said there's really nothing to report. Um, I think we have one meeting, she wanted me to make sure um, she, uh, you guys were aware, she reported they were hoping that there'd be a bus um, currently, they used, last year there was a bus that would drop students off right outside the library. They weren't able to do that at the beginning of this year. She had been told that they were, there was a potential for that happening. Apparently that wasn't true. Um, they're, because they're short staff, they can't, um, they can't free up a bus to, to do that. So um, they're trying to find other ways to provide um, programming for the kids at the library or bring it somewhere. Um, but that's that's all they they wanted me to make sure they shared that. That's it. All right, gentlemen, thank you for your bill for once. Um, all right, <coughs> old business. We have the minutes from the January third meeting.
Make a motion to approve. You have a second? Was it? Oh, I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item is um, we have two assessing contracts. Uh, one is an assessing contract for uh, North Town Associates, which is Jason, that does the majority of our of our property assessing. Um, this is our annual contract with him. Uh, we will get our um, reval contract, um, townwide reval contract, um, probably next month for that. Um, and then we got the um, utility assessing contract for San Susi. Um, so both of those, are, again, that's the annual contract with them. Um, obviously, we want to stick with, with Jason in Northtown because we're doing a reval. Um, and in San Susi, we have one appeal that, that is being appealed to, um, through the courts, and San Susi's been in the middle of that. So it's proven that the state is down for this year. Yeah. Instead of starting over with some of that. Which appeal is it? Ever yeah, Who's supposed to get those anymore? Well, yeah. Um, the court, court. <coughs> that was the whole purpose of the last bill we signed. Do away with them. I guess it should be very quick. <laughs> Maybe make those bills a little tighter. <laughs> it, is pretty, it is pretty tight. Tell me about the rebuild. Uh, we're doing a hometown rebuild this yes. year because it's five years. Yes. We started this business with Jason. He was going to do 20 minutes a year for five years and it was going to be done and not need a rebuild. Wasn't that correct? Uh, a statistical update, no? <laughs> well, he's on a, what they call a cyclical revaluation. Yeah. So he does those, that, the portion, a portion of town for the five years, and then the actual reval and statistical <coughs> portion of it is done in the last year. Okay. So that's the part that's being done. Oh, I misunderstood done. it. I understood that if he did 20 percent a year, that we were going to get away from it, from the whole whole thing. Very good. Did it? Did it help any? I mean, we I, I don't know the answer to that because I don't know what his invoice is going to be for. For doing for doing, it. For what? <coughs> doing a reval. The reval, as opposed to going out in one year and doing it all in one year. Yeah, I, I know that the reval is estimated to be about thirty thousand. Well, I mean, I guess my understanding when we, when you guys told Jason to go ahead and do this five year, five, twenty percent a year, that um, that it was going to be cheaper for us than doing a wait and doing a five year reval. But now uh, I find we're doing a complete five year reval just the same. Well, I, I, I makes sense. I'm not sure when that happened. And I'm not sure what the cost was yeah, prior to for exactly. just doing it in one year. So, I, I mean, it's hard to answer that question because... So, we got, they sold the bill of goods for him doing 20 a year. I don't know. I, 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 Al, Alan, I, I, I can neither <coughs> deny nor confirm what you're saying because I wasn't the one that, that, that was involved in that. Right. So. Believe me, I'm here. I, I'm not so telling you, but I'm, I'm telling you that I can't Somebody deny nor confirm you, you were here, but do you remember what the yeah, cost was to do it in one year instead no, of spreading it out? Right. Okay. They, they do an average, I think, over the, the five years. There is data that's collected over five years that goes into it, but the last one, actually, when I was first on the board, I think it was every 10 years you had to reevaluate, and it was well over 100000 back then to do a reevaluation, and they were absolutely horrible then. So you think this 20% did help him more than that? I believe so. Okay, because it was supposed to, but now I'm feeling, but my understanding then was that we weren't going to have to do one of those state mandated because he was doing 20% a year times five years with 100% it was done. But you'd still end up having to do one because at the end of the five years he's still got to compile all his facts and figures and stuff. So that is the five years. But we used to hire an outside firm that just came in to do the reeval. So literally they had no knowledge of anything. They just come in and Put a reval together. Right, and they kind of, and some people, uh, Starkman included, thought it was a good idea because there was somebody that didn't know anybody in town. They knew they were just 
clean, re reassessing. They had no dog in the fight. Yeah, those were some pretty bad results that. coming out of those, too, if, if I remember right. Well, yeah, but like they all going to get excited every time you do a rebound. You know that. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, but I believe it has helped okay. the uh, cut I the cost of those. We were being sold a bill of sale a bill of goods five years ago, and now it's still the same price. So. All right. What right. else? Um, we have an intent to cut for Mike and Keith Cop, tax map R23, lot 17, um, US Route 3 and Prospect Street, um, or Prospect Street, 21.23 uh, acres of land, all of it to be cut. Bunch of land use change tax bills to sign. It's marked for a sign. Uh, first one is for Louie and Daphne Cassidy. Law is tax map out 15, lot 49. Um, tax due was $1,500. Due to the sale of a abutting property that, that decreases the remaining pr um, lot under the 10 acres that qualifies. Second page where it's marked. Your name's written there. Thanks. Oh, yeah. It's cuts. David and Connie Salone, 66 Arthur White Road. Um, land use change tax due $3,500 due to home site development, taking an acre out of their current use land to develop. Beverly Essen, property 215 Portland Street. Um, total land use change tax due is 6000 due to site development for the cell tower. This one by four doors. Did they finish that tower? There's something, there's, there's a carrier on it. I can't remember what, which one it is. Group four, 
for Mary Elizabeth Lane. Tax due is three thousand due to development uh, home site development. One in the cash. Marceau, Marceau Family Trust on Mary Elizabeth Lane. Total tax due four thousand due to sale of budding lot, leaving the park this parcel in less than ten contiguous acres. So family trust, $4,800 tax due for the same reason. Sale of parcel, leaving a budding lot less than the 10 acres. My Mary was not born again. I think he was just here to see Troy. Oh, okay. and Shane. And Shane. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, basically, the, the, the staff weren't, aren't losing any benefits, it's just how they're accumulating it is different, where um, at the beginning of the year they get what they're due in sick and, and, and vacation time, and if they, whatever they didn't use by the end of the year, they basically lost. It was use it or lose it. This earn time policy, it's, it's something that most businesses, companies, industries are using now, where you, over the course of the year, you earn so many hours based on the hours you work, and you max out at a certain amount. Once you max out, you don't earn any more until you use some, you use some of that time, and then when you free up time, you, you continue to earn, you go back to earning it, um, and you can continue to roll over from one year to the next, because um, you're earning it throughout the year. Again, the maximum amount of time that, that staff have now is what the maximum amount of time staff would have with this policy. It's just not going to be use it or lose it, um, and it would be the uh, basically we would, we would start it, it as long as you guys are comfortable with it. We would start it as of the first of the year, um, and and it, it coincides. It's very good now because it coincides with us changing our payroll software, so we can um, start up with with the, the, the earn time, the, the calculations and the formula for calculating the earn time. So it, it kind of works out well in that, in that aspect. So what is the max time that you're looking at? So basically the max time <coughs> for somebody who's been here for 25 years um, between what, the, what they get now, it would, they, they get five weeks vacation, two weeks sick time. So that's, it would be seven weeks total earn time. Um, that's what, that's, so that's where I say it's the same benefit. First time, uh, a first time individual. Currently, how it is now is, the first year you work here, you don't get any time. 
you're on probation for a year, you don't get any time. After you've been here a year, then you, you can have, you're, you're eligible for sick and vacation time, two weeks each, so four weeks total. Um, kind of, it's, it's tough to hire new people, especially if they're older and already are, you know, kind of in the industry, because typically they would have vacations set up. If they left, if they left one company to come to us and have us say, you can't go anywhere for a year, um, they might have some vacations on. So actually, once they start, they start earning um, time. And I think that that will help us attract uh, more people and retain the current ones. So um, basically, between four to seven seven weeks, depending on how long you've been, been with the town. Sounds very similar to what the county is using, actually. Yeah. Do they use earned time? Yeah. I know Groveton does. Um, my wife's organization, Northern Human Services, does it, and I kind of use some of her policy to, right. to take to get this. Yeah. I mean, what the county was doing. We were all in six and eight months when these people we were right. getting whacked and on a budget at the end of the but when the, these people uh, were retiring the last few years. But that's gone away. Right, yeah. That's the concern when I that's first got right. delegation. <laughs> it's a mess. They yeah. could accumulate as much time as they wanted to and it was a disaster when they decided to retire they're, because they're, they're working out with any, right. any extra years pay or two years pay some of them. And our current per, our current policy says that you're not allowed to carry over so there's a bill in the state house, and it's saying it's being heard today or tomorrow, and same, it, they've put it in last session. It didn't pass because you either use it or lose it. I mean, it's up to con the employer, but the, we're not going to mandate, you know, because most people take the two weeks vacation at the end of the year. They want the extra two weeks pay. Yeah. It's either you use your time or you don't. Yeah. So uh, that's I can't see that law changing right now either. So, but yes. this, this is good. I, mean, I just don't kind of have a problem with them building sometime, but it's yeah, yeah. just got to be limited, limited at some point. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. so basically, you know, our, our longer, we only have a few um, employees that, that are at the maxed out. If, once they hit the, if they, if they don't use any vacation time for a whole year. They max out at seven weeks. They're not earning anymore. And, and they, they have to use some in order to then re-earn re it. And they can't earn any more than seven weeks. No, there's no banking. There's no nothing. They can't. Carry any more than four or seven So years Randy's years. never going to earn any more time. No, Randy's not quite at that, that high age yet. The key is you got to earn. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a different story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm so, I mean, the calculations are all there in the policy and the sheet and, and how it's, um, you know, how we're, we're, it's to be utilized and, and used. There is, a, there is a provision as well, and I think. We didn't really have this in there in our current policy, but I think it's important, again, that we're trying to, to be kind of a cooperative um, organization that you, you can, employees can give another employee vacation, uh, some of their earned time um, with, with approval. Um, you know, say you have an employee, God forbid, that has some serious health issues that, that are, are running short on their earned time. Um, you could have a few uh, other employees that might have some, some time give them a week or, or, or two, whatever they need. So I think it's, it's something that's there. We don't have that provision now, but again, it's something that I think benefits everybody mm -hmm. all around. Again, that would mirror the, the county's policy that you can give time to someone who needs extra sick time or something. So no problem with that. Well, the new county administrator take care of that, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, hopefully over the next few months we'll be coming back with some more changes because again it's our current policy is over 20 years old so it needs some updating or even just some reaffirmation um, because you know over time if nothing is really looked at or touched they, there can be some some tweaks or changes that might not necessarily um, be consistent with what the policy states so we need to come back in line with that policy or make the policy be in line with what we're already what we're doing now. Uh, you looking for a formal approval of this now, or? I would, yes. Yeah, I, I have spoken with the employees. They seem happy with how we're rolling it out and with the policy. Um, I went and listened to it the other day. Yeah. yeah he, he, he sold them pretty good. <laughs> he <laughs> he sold them pretty good. <laughs> That's, I just say <laughs> <added> that. <laughs> well, if I convince my wife to marry me, I guess I can sell this. <laughs> with that said, I'll make a motion. I get a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.
Um, ben has just confirmed he's a BS artist. <laughs> <laughs> you hired me for, right? Um, another thing, it's not on any agenda, but um, I want to bring it up. Um, Ann Morgan came in, she's on the board of the His Historical Society. They want to come, they want to put another Warren article before the voters. Last year, you guys allowed it to just be a, 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 a Warren article, not go for um, a petition. And typically how we do it is if you were on the warrant last year and you don't increase your request, there's no need for it to be a petition. So I just want to confirm whether well, this was a fairly new one, if that's, if that's fair, still fair. They've got some major projects. Um, they want to do work on the, repair the foundation to the, to the building, sill work, um, supports in the basement. So, and, and they are seeking grant funding as well. And this would act as, as a match towards that. How much are they seeking? Look at 10,000, which is what they asked last year. Do I understand that, um, so that she's asking the select men to put that in a warrant article rather than going out and getting 45 signatures on a petition? Is that, is that what the process is here? You asking me or the select men? I'm asking you. I, I know we did it last year. I yeah. That sounds like what she is, yeah. is asking. Words, yes. the, so I understand the, the selectmen can put warrant articles yeah. on, right? Yes. But anyone who is not part of the town management or the select board has to get a petition of 25 signatures. So in this case, she's avoiding, the society's avoiding getting 25 signatures by asking the town to put it on. Yeah. Well, with that said, I, I'm going to say I'm not against the article whatsoever, but when you select and put a warrant article on it, more or less gives the, or your blessing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it's more apt to go. You yeah. get a better chance of suffering. Yes. Yeah. But now. It is. And, and now, if I'm not mistaken, the budget committee is also going to have to give their blessing to this because they go over warrant articles also. Yeah. Like they did last year. Yeah. The budget committee has to approve the warrant articles? No. no. The only ones that actually present. require a vote of whether or not you support them or not support them are capital reserve oh, articles. Okay. I thought because we we talked about it in the budget. It's only we did, and yeah. each time I remind you that okay. only the articles that are involved with capital reserve funds need to be voted on. Okay. Right. That say selectmen re recommend or not recommend. Correct. In the budget committee. Yes. But we've always brought these before. The budget committee, yeah. which I think we should. Well, they get reviewed at yeah. the public budget hearing. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Now, a month ago, Ben, you you uh, said you were talking about the uh, welcome center going back to town hands and possibly the fireman museum and possibly the Holt House. You were going to talk about. No, I, I, I didn't talk about the Holt House. You didn't. No. Uh, I, what I, what I said was that when I when I got an estimate as to what it would cost to if that if we owned those buildings what it would cost for insurance. Mm -hmm. That's if the Holton House was included because it was brought up at the last year's town meeting that if for some reason the Board of the Historical Society ceases to exist, that building becomes the town of Lancaster's responsibility. So in essence, it is kind of a town asset that yeah. we are responsible for in some way, shape, or form. Well, in that way, shape, or form, can you sneak it under your insurance then and maybe give them a, and, and help them out? No, because we don't own it. If we don't own it, we can't insure it. Just like I, I can't insure your building. Right. Or your property, so unfortunately. That's but now, last well, yeah, last meeting we were kind of short on people here. Yeah, last meeting, but I dropped this up. Uh, I understand you're going to put a warrant article on to for the town who voted if they want to buy the information center. Is that correct? Welcome I still haven't. Yeah, I still haven't got confirmation from the Renaissance on that. Yeah. I, I, as far as I know, as far as the the Fireman's Museum, that won't be this year. Well, my suggestion last time was, and like I say, we're kind of short on people, so it didn't get discussed very much, but how about to ask them what if they'd like to put that item on the market and sell it outright and, and uh, put it back on the tax rolls. I don't think the town like it, it should be in real estate. Well, we, 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 can't, we can't ask the townspeople to sell the building if we don't own it. If we don't own it, number one, yeah, number two, it's out. It's out we own the land. land. We, we own, own the land, too. Well, if you, you're going to tell me the Renaissance Committee can't sell the building? <clears throat> uh, they probably could. Well, then. 
But you, put it but you can't have a warrant article to tell a private organization yeah. to sell their building. They, no. they no. could sell it, but it would be conditioned because it's a building on town land. Well, right. land owned by others. I don't think O'Connor Lancaster should take it over. So. Um, I think they got enough buildings to maintain, and they shouldn't be in the real estate business. There's a viable rent going on upstairs, and it should be sold, put back on the on the uh, tax books. And I'm not the only citizen in town that feels that. Throwing that out, I, I would hope that they would encourage the Renaissance Committee to, to go ahead and sell it. Yes, I realize that it isn't town, that it's on town land, but it certainly can be done. Uh, don't throw roadblocks in the way of it if it wants to be done. I don't believe that anybody's putting roadblocks up, Al. We're just, we're, we're just, we're You're saying it can't be done because it's on town land. You're saying it can't no, uh, what, what, what we're saying, or what I'm saying, is that the town can't sell the building no. because we don't own the building. Right. Can I sell your building? Can a town sell sell my building? If if we if we approve the town meeting, if we approve the town meeting, can the town buy that building? Would they sell it afterwards? I don't know. You know, I guess I'm, I'm saying that that's what should be done with it. When they started that project, as well as the fire Museum, museum, uh, this isn't going to cost the taxpayers any money. Now I can see down the road it's going to cost the taxpayers some money. So what? We begin, how much we give them a year now? Fifteen thousand. Right now, and th basically, I mean. That, that would go bye bye right there. I mean, and the insurance, is, most of it's insurance, so when it gets rolled into our Six insurance, so we're going to eat it. Yeah. So that would get eaten. So it's really not a, a it's not an encumbrance on the town. It won't be any encumbrance to the town. Well, but then also, Terry brought this up at the last meeting. She had looked it up from the meeting before. I said that they made a payment in lieu of taxes because they were doing the rent upstairs and making income. And all of a sudden, they get swept under the rug. They stopped doing it. That was agreed upon with the select board that they would do a payment for taxes because of the fact that they had a money-making entity upstairs as a rent. And so the proportion that was rentable in, in the proportion of that building, they paid tax on it. They paid a payment in taxes. Now it's just been swept under the rug and forgotten. Nobody's doing it. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't necessarily appreciate the implication that people are sneakily doing stuff because I was yeah. never aware. Well, you have under the rug. <laughs> well, but, but but you make it sound like that the people sitting in this room are the ones that sweep it under the rug because I never I was never well, aware. Well, you're enough to deny knowing about it. But what I'm saying is it got swept under the rug by someone. And that may be so. <laughs> Sometimes these things are just omissions or somebody forgets. That yeah. doesn't mean anyone's they handily, lying. They handily forgot. Degree. They handily forgot that they were paying them. Uh, somebody told them, well, forget about that because nobody chased them for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the tax collector didn't chase them for it, did she? <laughs> Who and who taxes doesn't come out of the tax collector's office. Who manages the uh, payment in lieu of taxes business for the town? Is that select board that negotiates the payment with the entity? Yeah, and that's, that's going to be, during the reval, that, that's going to be looked at this year. I, I just wondered, because the hospital went from $10 million to $20 million, but the payment hasn't gone up in three years. And Right, so that's why that this doesn't thing. seem exactly kosher. And I brought this up before, but I haven't seen any action or, any, or heard of any discussion. And with as, the as I just as I just said, all those pills are going to be looked at this year during the revalue. Okay, but that's not a rebound. That's on the books of twenty. No, I know, but it's a good opportunity to start discussing the taxes. So that, that's that's your answer, Ralph. Okay, thank you. All right, let's get back to Did you? the uh, Holton House. So, are we? to put that on a warrant article? Or I we don't do? really have an issue with it. <clears throat> Again, it's a historic structure, and the more they can do to it, if it ever does come back, I'm just very interested in wanting to know where they're looking for grants, because that is the prime example of a property that should be getting funded by the LCHIP yeah. fund. And I think... I know that they've looked at that, and I can't. I, I, I don't know for sure whether that's one place that they are um, applying now, but I know that they have looked at, at El Chip for sure. And I can, I can get, I can talk to Ann and see where they've been applying for stuff. The problem with the El Chip is the strings that are attached to that grant on how they have to do the work makes it. Well, I mean, makes it I see what. And as far as I'm concerned, it's an abuse of the El Chip fund. I agree totally. Randolph just, is yeah. buying forest land all over the place, taking money, uh, property off the tax rolls. Right. 
Same in all the towns. Yeah. My island did the same thing. Yeah. There's been a bunch of places. It's And they're paying stupid money. And then when you it. go to do a building they want you know, they want every like, when did you buy for nails and what you used for wood, everything. It's, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. I'll get a list. It's a cost you quadruple what it costs for you to do anything wrong. I'll get a list okay. for next meeting about where they've applied and, and, and whether they, what the status of some of those yeah. are. I do know that they were they were awarded a 7 to save designation, which is the same thing that happened with the Parker mm -hmm. Noise building shortly before um, that was redeveloped. So hopeful that yeah. the 7 to save makes it eligible for more funding as well as brings uh, more attention to it um, for more fundraising opportunities. So yep. okay. I will do that. All right. Moving on. Uh, information, um, there was an email we received from DES saying that um, through federal legislation, the Israel River, the ice dam in town, that has been decommissioned, which means it is, um, it opens up the opportunity to have it removed, and DES is looking at funding funding that removal um, because it really hasn't proven yeah. whether it's worth anything or not. That never properly functioned, and I know there was a many-year battle over who actually owned the dam. Yeah. So the my town understanding is that we ended up coming out good, where it was determined we don't own it. However. Every year when I have, when there's an inspection and I meet with the Army Corps and DES, I bring that topic up and both entities say, no, we don't own it either. So, that was, it hasn't been maintained. Um, it is a liability. So, that was always the thing. I know the first time I was on the board back in 91, 92, whenever it was, they were sitting there and they were always trying to say the town owned it. Yeah. It was like, no, we don't. We don't want it. Because it didn't work back then either. Yeah. So. You know, I recall people from the Army Corps of Engineers being in this room, you know, more than three or four years ago. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And they said they were going to take it, gonna take it out. They were going to take it out. Yeah. yeah. And I think they were waiting for the decommissioning. And, and that's, that's what that is, is to letting them know that that's been approved, now the next step's coming. Okay, yeah. It seemed to me that they said they were going to take it out. Mm -hmm. You know, says, well, they're going to take out the cross finally and they all know we're going to take it all out from Riverside Drive. Going, oh, yeah, they did. They ain't gonna lug that whole thing across the river. They're gonna take out. Oh, sure, sure. Down. Yeah. Vote it down. <laughs> <laughs> but they told them to get what he wanted to hear that they weren't gonna mess up his yard. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, public budget hearing is February 9th at seven. The February eighth. No, no, it's no, the ninth. Yeah, Sorry, that's your my agendas problem. are wrong. So it's, 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 it's Thursday the ninth. Well, so we won't conflict with high school. Yeah, good. Um, so that's at 7 p.m. And then the file, just, just a reminder, the filing period for um, elected offices opens January 25th, which I believe is next Wednesday. Yeah. And it closes February 3rd, which is a week and a half after, pretty much. Gene, you running again? What's that? Are you running again? Oh, I guess so. You're the one that's up. <coughs> and we have as well. That's it. Right. We have a few land use permits. Uh, one for Dan Lynn of New Hampshire, which is the Walgreens building, uh, to replace their H rooftop HVAC units. No. Obviously, they had a malfunction last week or two weeks ago, so they have an emergency repair. Um, David and Sarah Hill at 71 Rowell Road to remove their existing sugar house and replace it with a stick built um, garage, 24 by 60 by 20. Garage of electricity on concrete slab. And then uh, Jay and Kathy Jean Lavoy, 16 Prospect Street, renovating um, their kitchen. Placement of floors, counters, cabinets, no change in structural layout. That is the meeting. Okay. Anything else from the public? No, I think it's funny. Uh, <laughs> I find it kind of funny that. You directed, someone directed the people who want to do the uh, solar system up from the lot to the zoning board. Um, it seems to me the town didn't go to the zoning board when they plastered the Park Street with it. Seems like, it seems it's because, like it's because those, the, the town's solar is just like yours. The, those solar arrays power that lot, that meter. 
the solar array that's going out on Rexford's lot on North Main Street is going to be a commercial that's, that's going into the grid and be sold. So one way right. right. Mine goes two ways, by the way. Right. And yours is the best. Yeah. yeah. So that's why. That's the difference. Is, yeah, well, I don't know how that qualifies one to go before the building and one not. The building is land use, and the land use, like I say, it just looks funny to me that the town can put them up without going to the zoning board. You put yours up without going to the zoning board? Yeah. But it seems like that's a normal thing on, on private works. The town is definitely commercial. It's not private. No, not it's private. Not. No, but it's it's well it'd just be like if uh, let's just say Eversource wanted to put a solar array on their property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could do that because it just powers that. If Shane wanted to put a solar array at his property <coughs> on North Main Street to, to power just his his lot, that would be allowable just because it's a commercial use. It's, it's for that lot. It's not for selling right. car wash. Yeah, just powers their lot. Oh, right. that's, a good, that's a good example. You know, what I'm saying is, I don't believe those people today go to the zoning board. Okay, well, that's, that's your belief. Just, you know, everybody else is getting away with it, and all of a sudden, oh, we don't have that on our zoning, so I guess, we better have one. I guess the biggest concern I would have with it is they are using a commercial lot for a commercial purpose, and we're making them jump through hoops to. Right, which so, the town didn't have to do, the car wash didn't have to do, well, the town didn't have to do. Well, that's neither here nor there. We're, we're behind the times on our zoning ordinance again because when we... Because it doesn't mention solar panels. When we did it last time, right. solar panels weren't a thing. But yet, the town's plan didn't mention solar panels, but the town could put them up, the car wash could put them up, Allen can put them up. But they're, they're singling out one person. I don't think it's, it looks right. I think that'll draw the horns in and take them away from the zoning board. Yeah. And if you want to, if the zoning board wants to make a change and want to say where they're allowed and where they're not allowed, then fine and dandy. I, yeah, the town should follow its own rules. Yeah, but the, unfortunately, they are. I, I agree with you, but unfortunately, the town is following the rules because at some point they said if this use isn't mentioned, in the zoning ordinance, then it's not an allowable use. Right. So. Where, in my mind, if it's a commercial use in a commercial zone, it it's should be allowed. Use. Right. But that's not how our zoning ordinance works. We, we didn't have cell towers in our zoning ordinance, but we allowed them. There is a, there is a, there is a, there is an ordinance in our zoning ordinance, Alan. <coughs> I know there is, but it doesn't specifically say cell towers. It's telecommunications towers, yeah. which is before, a cell tower. Before, well, before cell towers. Ordinance was written before cell towers or kicked one off and redrove with that one. That uh, with that ordinance once. What? Why? I, okay. All right. There was a telecommunication one, which is it's a cell tower. Cell tower. Right. It's yeah. a cell tower. Yeah. And there is an ordinance for that. It's All right. The other thing was, you were going two months, uh, two months ago, you were going to go see a lawyer and see about turning down with these How would that work? Yes. That's right. I was going to bring it back. They, uh, he, he basically he recommended that I go and speak with Mr. Davidge and tell him that if the select board does have the authority to do it, there's a letter um, hoping that he will be volunteering and taking care of that, and I just haven't done that yet. I will continue to ask if this has been going on for 10 years, and no select board has ever had the gumption to follow through with it. I'm, I've got confidence in this. <coughs> no, and I apologize for not bringing that. Well, I just, you know. You have an old time like me that remembers what it says. Yeah, you remember a lot, Alan. <laughs> well, don't, and you don't forget to bring it up. Alzheimer's, did you say? <laughs> no, but there's so many things like that payment and lower taxes. I knew that in my mind, and, and then Charity looked it up and said, yes, they used to do payment and lower taxes. And I said, you know, uh, I've seen it here, right here, and they voted on by select board. But, you know, you've changed select boards, and that's the one thing about it, longevity. I mean, change, just getting speed light, you should stay on. Because uh, if Leon is the anchor here, because Leon's been here for so many years and on his own board and, and been involved in it for so many years. But uh, I don't bring up things like that, blame the board actors, trying to say you did something crooked. Somebody in the past did somebody something crooked. <laughs> you're, you're excused, you weren't here. Well, I appreciate that. All right. Anything I want to Are you done? Go, Adam, they're, they're doing pickleball. Yeah, I won't have to walk the Anything from the water.
Go get no, them. I have them all set. They're all set? Yep. I know, I have it. Thank Can you. Can I get a motion? Motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor. All right. Uh, yeah. So what you trying to say? You ain't going to vacation in overtime? <laughs>